Alrighty, hi. So welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna start actually making the project instead of you know me just talking about it. So what I did is I made the core HTML file again. I just wrote all the basics right now, the shell of it, the blueprint. I didn't feel like typing everything when we did a hundred times before. I also have a CSS file just like before. Actually, let me show you how my project set up. So here's my main HTML file, and I. I like to put all my CSS files in a separate folder. So as you can see, instead of just index CSS, I put it in a new CSS directory. And another thing I want to mention is all of the images, like um, these images at the bottom menu, these little icon images, if you want to use the same images I'm using whenever you're following along with the series, then what you can do is go to my forum and I'll put everything in a zip folder so you can just download the entire project, all the files, and of course all of my images are in the images folder. So if you want to do that then go ahead. If you want to use your own images feel free to do that too. But again, all of our main HTML files are going to be in the main directory and the CSS files and images files each have their own um, directory or folder as well. So now that we know how it's set up, let's go ahead and actually start coding. Finally, it took us long enough. So the first thing I like to do is before I start typing any real HTML code, I like to set up the CSS file. Now this is pretty much the first couple of things we write are core elements of our project. So the first thing I want to do is I want to apply a margin of zero and also a padding of zero to all elements. And this little star symbol means um, all elements are your entire web page. Now why do I want to do this? Isn't you know the elements at zero by default? Not exactly. Depending on your browser, and this is one reason why um, like having different browsers suck because it makes your elements display differently depending on you know what browser users using users using hmm, interesting but some browsers like Chrome they apply default paddings or default margins to certain elements like unordered lists and um, not like paragraphs but like images and stuff like that so just to make sure that no matter what browser we're using we're starting with zero as their default, that's what I like to do. So if you don't do this, then you're gonna have like random margins on crap. So now that we got that taken care of, browser compatibility, let's go ahead and start working on the responsive stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set the font size of the entire body to 100%. Now, I showed you guys why this is beneficial. Pretty much, it's something that we can easily change and um, if you don't know why I'm doing this, then go watch the tutorial on font, responsive web font. All we have to do is change this, and all of the font for our entire website is going to be able to adjust accordingly. So, again, I already explained all this. I won't explain it again. The font family is just preference. I like Arial because, I don't know, I just think it's simple and it looks good on all devices. Now for the background, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add that tileable URL just like my main website that is dot dot images slash dark hardwood dot jpeg now remember the reason that we can't just add images is because right now our CSS file is right here in the CSS directory now dot dot means you have to go back one directory or up a directory and then we can access the images folder so if we try to access it right here it's gonna say uh you don't have any images folder in here so that's why we added that dot dot and this of course just displays um the background and also repeat it make sure it tiles so now the last thing i want to do is for images remember for responsive web design if you add a max width of 100 percent what this means is the maximum that they can be displayed is according to whatever size they are by default. And this is because if we stretch them bigger than they are, then they're going to lose quality and we don't want to do that. So again, the biggest they can ever grow is this and they will never lose any quality. That's basically what I'm trying to say. 
So let's go ahead and save this already and refresh and check it out. Again, we don't have any um, other images besides the background and we don't have any font so we can't really see any of that. But the background image looks good. No matter how far we shrink it or grow it, it tiles perfectly. So we got that taken care of and what I'm going to do in the next tutorial is actually start building this bottom menu right here. So again, I'll talk to you guys about all the pieces of this and it kind of looks like an Instagram um, type menu at the bottom, but for mobile users, it gives them a really familiar experience and it's also really cool and easy to make. So that's what we have to look forward to. Thank you guys for watching and well, I'll see you next time.